people did well with the implicit differentiation. They pretty much had the idea, but there were still uh, some errors. So let's look at the derivative with respect to x of x cubed y to the 3 halves. Now, that derivative, uh, well, this is a product function, product of the x cubed and the y to the 3 halves function. So what's the derivative? Well, it's the derivative with respect to x of x cubed multiplied by y to the 3 halves. That's like this is f and g. That's your f prime g. Plus <coughs> x cubed times the derivative with respect to x of y to the 3 halves. That's your f g prime. And then the rest of it is fairly straightforward, especially since people did pick up on the idea that when you take an x derivative of a function of y, the chain rule gives you this dy dx. Okay, so it all works out in a very straightforward manner. This derivative is 3x squared times your y to the 3 halves, and this derivative is your 3 halves y to the 1 half, which is multiplied by your x cubed. Uh, actually, the derivative of y to the 3 halves is 3 halves y to the 1 half times dy dx, then multiplied by the x cubed. Okay, um, now I saw some pretty imaginative, <laughs> to put it kindly, uh, results on uh, doing this kind of derivative. I saw something that looks something like this. Uh, derivative with respect to x of x cubed times y times 3 halves y to the 1 half dy dx. Uh, no plus, and of course you would have to have a plus applying the product rule. Now, as I say, people were really good about that dy dx thing, and that's where people usually fall down on this. So if you're just very careful about what rule is required for each derivative, that's going to be easy to fix. Okay, so I'm, I'm not uh, too worried about that, but we do want to get that straight. Okay, now, another example of a problem that people uh, often didn't do well on, and some people did, some people didn't. The people who did took this equation, and we're supposed to do this you know, by implicit differentiation, okay, took this equation and tried to do the derivative of the left-hand side. Now, that can be done. It gets kind of messy, but it can be done if you keep your wits about you and realize that you have a quotient function, this function over this function, and that each of these functions involves at least one, or in this case, two product functions. So it gets a little bit complicated. If you're very careful and follow the rules very carefully and very explicitly, it can work out. But it's a lot more work than if you follow my more or less universal advice and multiply both sides by a common denominator. Now, the one thing you do have to be careful of there is uh, you have to, when you do this, uh, you're excluding the values that make this expression zero. Okay. So uh, you, you do want to be careful about that. But otherwise, uh, everything works out very nicely. OK. And when you do, you get this. OK, just multiplying through by the common denominator. I don't have to read that to you. That's really straightforward. Multiply everything by this, and that's what you end up with. And now you're on familiar territory. It looks very much like uh, any other problem that involves products of powers of x and y. So again, I don't think anybody's going to have too much trouble if they take that step first. I do think that you're going to tend to run into trouble if you try to take the derivative of this. It just gets to be really messy.